All right, check that out. That's not a shop wall. That's not a bunch of wrenches sitting on the side. That's Huntington Beach beer. Surf City, pro shops galore, every kind of hot rod you can possibly imagine right here within five miles. And guess what? Oh, that is not a shop boot. So stay tuned, we got a huge car collection. Check it out. Knock, knock. Hey, Brian, how you doing? You must be Tim. I'm Tim. Chris said you'd be coming by. How was the beach? Oh man, it was a great drive. It is an amazing day out there. Awesome. Look at this place. And welcome to Surf City Garage. Man, this is a really cool place you have. You're not hiring, are you? <laughs> well, you know, you pick up application at the front. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's a little different. We've got a waterfall on the atrium and uh, got an actual surfboard for a boardroom. Chris and Jesse are out back checking out the cars. You're welcome to make yourself at home. Cool. Awesome. Not that way? Right through that way. Sweet. Thank you. Tim told me I'll hey, find you guys in here. Hey, what's up, hey, man? How you doing, man? Good to see you. For those of you who don't know, CJ, JC, Chris Jacobs, Jesse Combs. Welcome Dude. to Surf City Garage, man. Hey, yeah. What a place. Great to have you man. here. We're in it's the amazing. diner part of it right now. This is not a rough place to work. Yeah, this is pretty cool. Actually, there's some very cool cars in this small room right here. We got three Shelbys. We got a couple Boss 302s. We got a little Firebird over there. Got three a gas Indians. pump just in case you need to fill up. Exactly. Yeah. Like some news to work on your stuff. Got some Indians. Indian diner. But let me tell you, this room right here is just a very, very small taste of the entire collection at Surf City Garage. Not even an appetizer. You're scaring me. You're intrigued. Yeah. You are so intrigued. I went to dine. What do you got? Bring it up. You know what? Let's go, go check it out. out. Come on. Well, Brian, now you saw the cars that were in the diner. This is the kind of working garage here at Surf City Garage. Wow. These are all the cars that are waiting to be are you restored. Shucking me, man. That no, is I'm crazy. Not. Look at this place. You can see there's a ton of GTOs back here. So what's up with this one? This looks like a goat, but isn't. Well, that's a pretty keen eye. It does look like a goat because essentially it's a, uh, a fakey goat, you might want to call it. In 1971, the insurance companies pretty much tripled the premiums on the GTOs because they were just too powerful of cars. And uh, John DeLorean at the time, who was the head of Pontiac, wanted to continue making GTOs. So he came up with the idea of the GT37, which is essentially a Le Mans with the GTO running gear in it. Now <laughs> no, they were able to no, get no, away. DeLorean's crafty tricks that he pulled. Yeah, he, he was able to get away with it for about a year and a half or so. They made about oh, a few hundred of them before the insurance companies caught on to the GT37 and shut that down. Now, speaking of John DeLorean, that's actually how the judge got its name. He was friends with a lot of celebrities, and at the time, Sammy Davis Jr. was on a show called Laughing. Here come the judge, here come the judge. Yeah. That's Showing right. my age there. <laughs> exactly. Well, they use that catchphrase as the name because at the time, the Roadrunner was so catchy that he needed something to basically compete with that. So that's how they came up with the judge. He actually owns the very first and the very last 1971 judges because that's the, probably the most popular here. But how cool hmm. is that to own wow. the first and last that's that year? That's pretty wild. Now, you don't just you know do this overnight. I mean, no. what, what's, the, what's the story behind yeah, this Yeah, Surf thing? City Garage has got quite a bit of history. In fact, uh, it was established in 1970. That's when uh, the collecting kind of started. And he likes to maintain his cars at the highest level possible. He takes them to a lot of shows. And so when he was trying to uh, find the product that would best shine the cars up, he wasn't really satisfied with anything that was on the market. So he hired a chemist, and uh, he came up with a, a formula of his own that he was satisfied with. And when he was going around to the shows and his buddy was like, hey, hey, you know, how are you getting your car so shiny? He'd say, well, you know, try a little bit of the stuff that I came up with. How and everyone was just blown away. Yeah, I mean, so, it was actually like in little bottles with duct tape on it, like well, wax. Right, exactly. Huh. Yeah. Cool. So he said, hey, you know what? Why not share this with everybody so that when they go into their uh, auto parts store, they can get the very best stuff. In fact, we like to call it enthusiast grade. It's a little bit higher than your, your normal grade stuff well, out obviously, there. Obviously, uh, his enthusiast grade is a little bit higher than yes, most of ours. He has a lot of enthusiasm and he's for got his a, enthusiast uh, grade. Yeah, and he's got a huge laboratory here to, you know, to test, test the product. stuff yeah. on. So. But hang on a second. You've seen the uh, appetizer. We might call this the uh, first course. Let's get to the good Let's stuff. Let's chow. Come on, baby. <laughs> All right, Brian, so here you go, the Surf City Garage Museum. Wow. Isn't it amazing? Wow. That is unbelievable. Right? Yeah. Just when you think you've seen it all. Now, 
hang on though, museum is kind of a misnomer because Tim actually drives all these cars. He's like a true mechanic, he has a true passion for cars. He flies out and he'll drive it home no matter what shape it is and praying that it's gonna get home and he just, it's the thrill of it for him. I don't care what you say, there's not one man that can drive all these cars. No. He must have a lot of friends or he needs some new friends. Well, both. His friends <laughs> love him and we are fortunate enough to be his friends. We can drive some of these things. We got, of course, my favorite section, the Mopars here. Got the GMs down the center row. Corvettes in the upper back corner over there. This is obviously gonna take a while. So right now we gotta take a break. More from Surf City Garage. This is incredible. Look at this place. This must be a dream. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. All right, I gotta go find Chris and Jesse. Yeah, Brian, they're not just about cars. Surf City oh, also is about motorcycles. Panhead. Too. Beautiful right? old Harley. I can see you on that. Sturgis. Yeah, I think she'd get a little bit of attention at Sturgis oh, riding this thing. Just a little bit. I'll take it if they'll let me. Heck, let's go. Yeah, you never know. We could work something out. Now, what about this convertible over here? Oh, well, this is what we like to call the drive-in special. The trunk holds about three or four bodies. <laughs> yeah, I would, I would say free. so. That's like six feet across. Now check this out. The steering wheel on this thing is of particular interest. Normally you see these and there are a whole bunch of cracks in it, and especially in the convertibles when the sun oh, yeah. is just constantly shining on them. Not a crack in this whole steering wheel. Yeah, and you know, we try to repair these. We'll grind them out, fill them in, and then repaint in that area. But this one's clear. Can you imagine trying to you know, fix a repair on That's a clear surface? Pretty much impossible. That's the kind of attention to detail that they like to have on their cars here at Surf City. I mean, you, you really focus on the little things, and this Bonneville is certainly a great example of it. Well, even though he drives these, they're all very clean. He obviously really takes care of them. Really does. I mean, you just take a look at all these Chevelles down the center row, you get an idea of the meticulousness of Surf City Garage. Now, this truck right here, it's a 58 Chevy Stepside Apache. This is kind of the truck that he likes to say started it all. Tim's dad actually bought this new in 1958. Hmm. He learned how to drive on this truck. <laughs> wow. Kind of got away from the family. He wanted to get it back, so he found it in a field when he opened up the glove box, the original registration was in there with his dad's name on it. Wow. You know, for some reason, there's always like a field or a barn involved. <laughs> exactly. Hey guys, come check out this Roadrunner. Oh uh, yes. Let's go look at some motors. Right? Bench seats, 383, four speed. I, I like the air grabber. This guy has your air grabber hood you on know, it. Now, once a, you may not know this, and when you go in the air grabber, Go right down there in the coyote duster. Well, what an air grabber does to see, Brian, is it takes the air and it grabs it. It's basically where they got the name air grabber. And you're a master of the obvious. Yes, my yes. grasp of the obvious is astounding. Now, one cool feature on the Roadrunners in particular is, of course, the Roadrunner horn. Why don't you the go horn. give that a yeah, little tap voice tap? Voice of the actual Roadrunner itself. <laughs> <laughs> <Light breeze. laughs> they actually made a deal with Warner Brothers in 1968. 68, yep. They got the rights to the characters, uh, the cartoon characters, and put them on the Roadrunner as well as the noise that the Roadrunner horn makes. That must have cost them a bundle. I actually came out of a Jeep to get that uh, horn sound correct. They used a Jeep horn. Yeah, I think um, it was worth it though, right? It was very worth it. And what's the difference in that one and this one? Since well, you are... subtle differences between the 68, this is a 68 GTX versus 69 Roadrunner. There's a couple ways to tell. One is by the headlight bezel. You can see the 68 is a rounded bezel around the headlight mm -hmm. and the 69 has a squared off bezel. The other way to tell are the side marker lights. On the 68, they were round, very small, and on the 69, they were a little bit larger and rectangular. So from a distance, that's a quick way to tell whether it's a 68 or a 69. Speaking of Roadrunner, beep, beep. Let's go see some other stuff. <laughs> so much to see. 